Mount Carmel leadership remains diligent in assuring a safe and considerate worship environment as we assess current conditions to make the best decisions about next steps. We would like to hear from you. Please fill out the short survey regarding your perspective on your worship experience at Mount Carmel Church during the pandemic. You can find the survey on our website, mountcarmelindy.org, under About and Bulletin Announcements. Also note that the mask mandate and social distancing will remain in place as we continue to monitor CDC guidelines and our in-house worship numbers. We will keep our congregation updated regarding any changes to our current protocols. The Mount Carmel Men's and Women's Ministry is gearing up for the long-awaited, like-interest, small group activities for men and women of all ages. If you love to golf, swim, walk, bowl, play chess, basketball, etc., the Men's and Women's Ministry is looking for you to be a part of a like-interest small group. For more information, please see Sister Tina Nelson or Deacon Ron Barrett. Sign-up sheets are at the information desk. Mount Carmel, did you know that your food pantry feeds an average of 120 families a month, an average of 480 people per month, and gives out an average of 4,440 pounds of food per month? Serving the poor is part of our responsibility. What can you do to help in this E3 initiative? Fill the pantry. We need canned goods, cereal, pasta, crackers, peanut butter and jelly, etc., Thank you in advance for your support of our food pantry. Also, student-led worship is now accepting donations to help fill bags for the children for Easter Sunday. If you have any questions, please contact Angela Grace. We will be accepting donations until April 10th. You asked, where can I help? Well, the time is now. Emerge is planning a Mount Carmel reunion and we need your help. If you are interested in helping, please reach out to Angela Grace. We're making great strides to push forward in serving God through community. The Father's Farm could really use your help in making its transition to a no-till garden. This means less work. So even if you can't commit to every Saturday, we ask that you come out this Saturday at noon in the intake room to make it happen. Mount Carmel has a job opening for facilities manager. This position is full-time and reports directly to the chief of staff. Candidates should be well organized and able to delegate cleaning and maintenance tasks to team members. They should be able to monitor the safety and cleanliness of exterior and interior areas and perform routine maintenance on facilities and making or ensuring repairs as needed. If you're interested, please see the Mount Carmel job board at mountcarmelindy.org. Also, you can contact Victoria Goggins at 317-890-2740, extension 13, or Victoria Goggins at mountcarmelindy.org via email for assistance. Are you interested in learning how a small school can have a large impact on your child's education? The Harriet Tubman School of Excellence, an independent, faith-based, private middle school on the far east side, is enrolling 5th and 6th graders for the 2022-2023 school year. Visit htseindy.org to learn more and to register for one of the virtual open house events in February and March. Baptism is every third Sunday at the 11.30 a.m. service. If you have never been baptized, go to our website and click Join MC to register or call Rev. Lola Bartlett at 317-890-2740, extension 12. The Mount Carmel Community Academy is now enrolling for ages six weeks to five years old. We accept CCDF and OMW pre-K. We also are offering essential worker scholarships to private pay parents until June. We are also hiring for a pre-K teacher. You must have a CDA or early childhood degree. Make sure to check out the Mount Carmel Bookstore online at mountcarmelindy.org for cards, puzzles, and more. Emerge Ministry and Study Group wants to invite all Mount Carmel young adults age 19 and older to its ministry and fellowship outings. Contact Angela Grace at 317-890-2740 or email her at Angela Wallace at mountcarmelindy.org for this month's outgoing information and ask her how to stay connected.
And don't forget to join us for Turn Up Thursday every Thursday at 7 p.m. on Microsoft Teams. Go to mountcarmelindy.org and click student-led worship to get the virtual link. Come join MCC study groups as we begin our new study book, Developing a Servant's Heart. You can order your book online at mountcarmelindy.org. Click bookstore and pick them up at the church between Sunday services. Hey, Mount Carmel family, we want to intercede in personal prayer with you. If you have a personal prayer request and would like one of our ministers and prayer warriors to pray with you, please call our prayer line at 317-220-6202 or 317-220-MCO2. The Mount Carmel prayer line will go live Tuesday, February 8th. Prayer line hours are Sunday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. and Tuesdays from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. Want to put your shopping towards a good cause? Here's how you can make Mount Carmel Church your Amazon Smile charity of choice. The Amazon Smile Foundation will donate a percentage of the purchase price from your eligible Amazon Smile purchases to the Mount Carmel Church. Go to smile.amazon.com and search for Mount Carmel Baptist Church, Indianapolis, Indiana, or follow the link in this announcement to reach our Mount Carmel Church page as your charitable organization. Using a new or existing Amazon account, browse the website's wide selection of products with the same low prices and convenient shopping features as amazon.com. does another thing. He's already done more than I'm worthy of. I, I don't need another reason. But there yeah. Mount Carmel. Praise ye the Lord, saints of the Most High God. Can we stand? Welcome to Mount Carmel Church worship service. For those of you that are streaming live and those of you that are in the house, let us prepare our hearts to worship our God in spirit and in truth because our God is worthy of all the praise. Our God is worthy of all the praise. God is good, and I want to congratulate you all this morning because you took intentional and deliberate efforts to come into the house to give God glory, honor, and praise because he is worthy of all our praise. Our scripture reading is coming from Psalms 34, verses 1 through 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Shall we pray? Most gracious and holy God, it is in the name of your son, Yahshua the Messiah, that we come before your throne of grace and mercy to ask for help in our time of need, Lord. Lord, because we are always in need of your spirit. We are always in need of your power. We are always in need of your grace, your mercy, your favor, your protection, your healing, your provision, Lord. We are always in need of your love, Father God. We thank you, Father God, once again for another opportunity, Father God, to come into the house of the Lord, to lift up our hands and to acknowledge you, Father God, because you are the one true living God, the only true living God, Father God. You are the highest power, Father God. You are the great I am, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for all that you are to us, Father God, for your benefits, Father God. We thank you again, Father God, over and over and over each day in our hearts, Father God, as we praise your name, Father God. We pray for your presence in this place today, Father God. Have your way in this atmosphere, Father God. Allow your spirit, Father God, to move in this place, Lord, and be with us, Father God, in this service today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God some praise this morning, Mount Carmel. And those who are watching virtually, anybody glad God woke you up and got you to the house of prayer this morning? Hallelujah. How many know that we serve a great God and he has a great name and his name is Jesus? Can we sing about him this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. your name there's something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name we love to call your name call your name there's something, there's something we cannot explain, we cannot explain that happens when we when proclaim, we proclaim your great your name. name. Say it loud. Your great name. King Jesus. No other name. King Jesus. None stronger. We can call on things change. Come on, let's say it. We love to. We love to. Call your name. Call your name. There's something, There's something we cannot explain. We cannot explain. That happens happen when, when we proclaim your great your name. Great
when I call your name. 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 Say when I call your name. When I call your name. When I call your name. Jesus, 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 Jesus.
going to bless him for the power that's in his name this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Power in that name. Please be in prayer for the family of Sister Juanita Smith in her passing. Arrangements are Saturday, April the 2nd at Crown Hill Mortuary. Viewings 11 a.m. to 1 and funeral is at 1 p.m. Happy anniversary to Dinah and James Walker for 52 years of marriage. Happy anniversary. And we wish you many more. 52 years. That deserves a hand clap. Anybody can get married. Can you stay married? Mm. Happy birthday to Lamora Goggins. Happy birthday, Lamora Goggins. We wish you many more as well. Mount Carmel leadership remains diligent in assuring a safe and considerate worship environment. As we assess current conditions to make the best decisions about next steps, we would like to hear from you. Please fill out the short survey regarding your per perspective on your worship experience at Mount Carmel Church during the pandemic. See your email bulletin for the link. Also, note that the mask mandate and social distancing will remain in place as we continue to monitor, monitor CDC guidelines and our in-house worship numbers. We will keep our congregation updated regarding any changes to our current protocol. Good morning, Mount Carmel. My name is Tina. I am the president of the women's ministry. And we all know that May, I'm sorry, March is the month of recognizing women. We celebrate women. Mount Carmel has great women that work silently in our community. They never mumble a word. They come and serve every Sunday. They serve on ministries. They are reverends, they are doctors, they are teachers. It is only fitting for us to recognize the women that work among us. They are great and they need to be recognized. So with that being said, I would like to recognize with Lamar Campbell and the rest of the women's ministry, we would like to acknowledge the women in Mount Carmel. Amen. March is Women's History Month, and Mount Carmel Church is rich with women who are making history every day. Today, we would like to salute just a few women history makers from our congregation. Her celebration of indie art and soul. She is dynamic, she is vivacious, and her voice and talent, they are just as impressive as her resume. Singer Brenda Williams joins us right now, of course, as part of Indie Art and Soul. Good morning to Good you. Good morning. What is Good this, my friend, about singing for three U.S. presidents? Take oh. me back and tell me about that. That's impressive. Well, I'm old, so, you know, <laughs> I could go back 50 years and come up with three presidents, but That's it so was special. It was both Bush. Okay. And um, and Clinton. And Clinton. So back, yeah. And that wow. was even uh, George Bush when he came here. Yeah. I sang for him here, and he sent for me to go to St. Louis and sing for uh, twenty-five thousand vets that wow. were over there at the what, convention center. What so. is that like? Not <laughs> not many people can say that they've sing for a U.S. president. Is that nerve-wracking? <laughs> or is it just, no, I'm just gonna do my thing. Well, it's like singing for the Pacers and the yeah. uh, Colts, and uh, I've done them all, the yeah. baseball team. So wow. when they call, I go. We salute our very own Brenda Williams. She has been a feature celebrated artist since the inception of Indie Art and Soul at the Arts Garden and was one of the first highlighted on Indie Style this year to commemorate their 25th year celebration this past February. 
Brenda is one of our premier soloists at the Mount and a faithful member of the music ministry. Brenda's beautiful voice and passion to deliver heartfelt music with her unique style and presentation has taken her around the world and made her one of our 2022 Women's History Makers at the Mount. Um, as an internal medicine physician, I deal a lot with, especially as it comes to exercising with high blood pressure, um, how does exercise affect your cardiovascular health as far as your heart and how that can help decrease some of those risks. We also salute Dr. Dewana Stubbs. Born in Indianapolis, Dr. Stubbs attended Crispus Attucks High School where she participated in everything from being a cheerleader to several athletic sports and several other school groups. She graduated valedictorian. She also went on to receive her BS in science education at Indiana University and attended IU School of Medicine where she earned her MD. But that was not enough for her. She also has her master's in clinical research and an MBA from Indiana Wesleyan University. Dr. Stubbs is currently employed as Anthem's regional vice president as a senior clinical officer where she oversees and advises doctors concerning prior medical authorizations for patient care. She is a very active member of Mount Carmel and just recently ordained with her husband, Deacon Robert Stubbs. In February of this year, Dr. Stubbs is leading by example and loving without limits. This makes her a shining light and one of our 2022 Women's History Makers at the Mount. Reverend Patricia Holman is the senior staff chaplain for the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department and has been answering calls for help for more than 36 years, but it wasn't always with the chaplain's office. Reverend Holman patrolled in cars and on horseback before moving into the administrative ranks, and in 1994, she was appointed the first black IMPD deputy chief. It wasn't until she wanted to retire as a police captain that she was asked to stay with the IMPD and become a chaplain. She prayed that if she took the position, that God would give her peace with it. We affectionately call her Reverend Pat here at the Mount, but we're humbled by her humility to serve and recognize her as one of our 2022 Women's History Makers. We also salute Detective Lieutenant Kimberly Joyner Young. Kim was recently recognized by the IMPD News. Be sure to see the Mount Carmel Facebook page to review the awesome tribute that was written about Kim as she was selected to be highlighted during their Women's History Month celebration. We are proud to have Detective Lieutenant Young at the Mount and as one of our 2022 Women's Month History Makers. Join us as we salute and celebrate these awesome women of God. Amen, amen, amen. It is an honor to be around great women. Martin Luther King once said, everyone can't be famous, but everyone can be great. Be great in whatever you do, whether you serving tables or cleaning a bathroom. Just be great and be you. Thank you, Mount Carmel. I'm speechless right now. That was so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Woo. Love you, Brenda. I'm, I'm speechless right now. I'm, I'm just honored to know each and every one of those ladies. And um, it's because of the grace of God, right? It's the grace of God that we are still here and that we're even able to honor each other like that. Um, welcome Mount Carmel to service, to everyone that's uh, streaming online and all the beautiful faces that I see on this morning. So glad to see each and every one of you. I see Pastor over here. I know he's got his Bible open right now looking at the word and I know he has something real good for us on today. Mm. we go into service just think back on 
all the things that you've been through and, and just take a moment to just thank God for his grace and his mercy that we are still here.
God bless you. How many of you are glad to be in God's house one more time? Our God is indeed an awesome God, and our God is worthy to be praised. Thank you, uh, Sister Tina and Women's Ministry, uh, for saluting and recognizing some of the outstanding women here at the Mount Carmel Church, and we have so many of them, and we've been blessed by God to allow uh, these individuals to connect with the Mount Carmel Church. And um, so a few of them uh, were saluted on this morning, and it is so appropriate. Um, and we thank you so much for your work and for your commitment to our women's ministry. Amen. Praise God. We welcome those persons who are streaming live with us. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for those of you who are in person, worshiping with us. We are certainly glad uh, that you decided to come into the house of the Lord. You know, I just like being in church, you know. I, you know, I, you know, I, I do stream, and I like streaming and that type of thing, and we made it through the pandemic through streaming. I don't know what we would have done were it not for the technology that we had, uh, but as soon as the pandemic got to the point where we could show up in church. I couldn't wait to get here. You know, I, I know how David felt when David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm just excited even by the invitation of coming into the house of the Lord. So it's good to be here and it's good to, uh, to have you here. I want to look now at the gospel according to St. Luke. Luke chapter 13, and I want to start reading at verse 10. Luke chapter 13, and I'm going to start reading at verse 10. And when you have found that, would you please stand to honor the reading of the Word of God? Luke chapter 13, and I'm going to start reading at verse 10. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. He put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each one of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead them out to water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 years, be set free on the Sabbath day? From her bond, when he said this, all of his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all of the wonderful things he was doing. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, I want to look at verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up. Let's straighten it out. Let's straighten it out. 
sit yourself down, girl, and talk to me. And tell me what's on your mind. Don't keep telling me that everything's okay. Because if it was, then you wouldn't be crying. You've been tossing and turning in your sleep lately, walking around pouting all day long. How in the world you expect me to understand when I don't even know what's wrong? Let's straighten it out. Baby, let's straighten it out. Uh, that old school soul blues singer, Lattimore, expresses his frustration with his love relationship, that he recognizes that that love relationship has potential uh, to be something wonderful and to bless him and her with joy and with happiness, uh, with bliss and with excitement. But Lattimore recognizes, here is my dilemma, even though I recognize that this relationship has major potential and can create the happiness and joy and the fulfillment that it should fulfill. He says, on the other hand, there is something twisted, something broken, something crooked, uh, something bent in this relationship that's preventing it from moving toward the fulfillment of its potential. He says something is broken even though it's potentially beautiful. Something is twisted even though it has the potential to be a great blessing to us. And Lattimore says, I don't want to throw it all away. I don't want to get rid of all of it. But I'd rather work on the crooked places in this relationship. I'd rather work on the twistedness of this relationship because if we can get past the brokenness, if we can get past that which is twisted, if we can get past the bentness of it, the contortion of it, then we can make our way to something wonderful. And so Lattimore says, let's straighten it out so that we can get to where this relationship promises to provide for us the joy, happiness, and fulfillment. But we can't get there until we straighten it out. And some of my younger members are looking at me like, now what is that song you just quoted? <laughs> but Lattimore bespeaks the situation, the circumstances that this woman in our text faces. She too has a dilemma. She too has a predicament. And Jesus helps us to understand what her predicament, what her dilemma, what her issue is. On one hand, Jesus says that she is a daughter of Abraham. You still have your Bibles open, right? She's a daughter of Abraham. And being a daughter of Abraham, she is an heir to the promises of Abraham. All of the promises that God had promised, had offered to Abraham, all of the blessings that God had poured into Abraham. Here, this woman, who was a daughter of Abraham, has that potential. She has the blood of Abraham literally running through her veins. That means she has potential to be at a higher level. She has the potential to walk in those blessings. She has the potential of enjoying the air 
of being a part of the descendants of the people of Abraham. She has that potential. But then on the other hand, Jesus says that she had been bound by Satan for 18 years. Understand that Satan is not just a disembodied, wicked, evil, malevolent spirit that acts upon human beings with harassment, but Satan also manifests himself in structures and in systems. And as a matter of fact, we live in a satanic structure, a satanic domination system. That's why Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. He did not say that my kingdom is not in this world. He said it is not of this world. In other words, Jesus' kingdom, it is in the world, but it does not function according to the categories and the falsehoods and the lies of Satan. That Jesus' kingdom is in the world, but it's not set up the way Satan's kingdom is set up. And my beloved, we live in a kingdom that's set up by the enemy. It's set up by Satan, and we live in it. And here, this woman, living in a system that's twisted, living in a system that's broken, living in a system that's bent, here she is. She is the embodiment of the society that she lives in. She is reflecting the social structures that she lives in. We live in a society that's bent, and here she is bent. We live in a society that's twisted, and here this woman is, she's twisted. We live in a society that cannot straighten itself out, and here this woman is bent over, and she cannot straighten herself out. She has potential, but there is something in her that's twisted, something in her that's bent, something in her that's broken, that prevents her from becoming all the daughter of Abraham could become. She lives in that system. She lives in that space where the system has worked on her to the point that she becomes the embodiment of the system that she's a part of. Consequently, this woman is bent over and has been bent over for 18 years. And the Bible said no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't straighten herself up. She's bent, she's broken, she's wounded, she's bruised, and she can't straighten herself up because she lives in that type of system. And beloved, it's hard to live in a system it's hard to, uh, to be straight and a system to be upright in a system that's so low down. It's difficult to live in a system with morals when immorality is what's celebrated. It's difficult being ethical in a system where unethical behavior is often celebrated. It's difficult living in a system as a truth teller when lies and falsehoods are what's celebrated and highlighted. It's difficult living in a system being good when evil and wrong are rewarded and celebrated. And so here this woman is. She is a victim of the system that she lives in, and evidence of her victimization is that she is bent over. It's hard to stay right when you live in a society that's wrong. It's hard to walk upright when you live in a system where the low down is celebrated. Here this woman is, she is the reflection of a system that's broken, the reflection of a system that's bent, the reflection of a twisted system, because here she is, twisted herself. We see her predicament. But here is the good news. 
we see that despite the fact that she's twisted, despite the fact that she's broken, despite the fact that she's bent, she's in the right place. She's in the house of God. Y'all, I like that. Because there is something about the house of God that attracted her. Despite the fact she's bent and crooked, there is something about God's house that was attracted to her despite the fact that she's bent over, that she's twisted, that she is uh, crooked because she has been acted upon by a system that has caused her to become crooked. Nevertheless, she's in the house of God. And that's good news because the truth of the matter is, is that all of us have something in us that's twisted. There is some area in everybody's life that's twisted and contorted. And yet this woman understood that I'm twisted. Nevertheless, I have enough strength in me to recognize my crookedness. And the strength within me is what attracts me to the house of God. My brothers and sisters, there is hope for her. Because despite the fact she's broken and bent over and crooked, despite the fact that she knows that she has some contortions in her life, despite the fact that she knows that she has some wrong in her life, she still comes to church and recognizes that if I can just get to the house of the Lord, if I can just get there, I know that Whatever it is that's going on in my life can be dealt with. She comes to church, and my brothers and sisters, we have those who have come to church, and they know they're wrong. They know they're crooked. They know they have some twistedness in their life, and so they sneak in church, they get their worship on, and then they sneak out right before the benediction in many instances because they are ashamed of their twistedness. They are ashamed of their bentness. They are ashamed of what they been into, but there is something attractive about the house of God that calls them to come despite their twistedness, despite their dysfunction, despite the fact that they are bent over, despite the fact that they've got some wrong areas in certain parts of their life, they still come to church because they recognize their need for it. So there is hope for them, but then there are some people who said, I've looked at myself, I've looked within, and I don't see anything broken in me. I don't see anything twisted about me. I'm perfect and I'm upright. But if you've been looking at yourself and you can't see any imperfections, if you can't find any twistedness, it could be that you don't have enough light in you to see the darkness. Because only light can recognize darkness. Darkness cannot recognize darkness. Twistedness cannot recognize twistedness. Brokenness cannot recognize brokenness. But only that which is fixed and mended can recognize that which is broken. So if you cannot recognize any brokenness within yourself, it could be because you don't have enough light within to recognize it. Here this woman is. She comes into the house of God, y'all, despite the fact that she's broken, despite the fact that she's twisted. She comes to the house of God. She's in the right place. But then when we look at it, we see Jesus' power. Because when she comes in, the record is that Jesus recognized her. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how broken you are. If you are in church, you're in the right place. It doesn't matter how twisted you may be. If you are in the house of God, you're in the right place, and God recognizes you. God sees you. But not only did Jesus recognize her, Luke said he called her to himself. Jesus said to her, come here. Who, me? Yeah, you, the broken one. Me? Yeah, the twisted one. Who, me? The contorted one. The bent one. 
Me, the one that's filled with dysfunction. Yeah, you, come here. Come close to me because you are in church. You are in the right place. But you need to come close. Come on, y'all. You are in church. It's good to be in church, but it's better to come close to Jesus. Jesus told her, I know you're broken, but come close. I know you've got some twistedness in you. But come close. I, I know you've got some big areas in your life. He told her to come close. I need for you to come close to me. Uh, despite the fact you're wrong, come close. I know you've got some dark areas in your life, but come close. I want you to come close to me because I have what it takes to fix that which is broken in your life. But you've got to come close. There are some people who want to come to church but don't want to get close to Jesus. There are some folk who come into the house of God but want to keep their distance from Jesus. But if you're broken and you're running from Jesus because you are afraid that Jesus might condemn you for your brokenness. But when you come into the house of God and you have an encounter with Jesus, Jesus is the one to tell you. I know folk are walking the other way when they see you. I know folk are putting you down when they see you. I know folk don't want to be around you because of your brokenness, but it's because of your brokenness I'm calling you to come close. Come close because of your brokenness. I know you're down, but come close. I know folk don't want to be bothered with you, but I want you to come close because I have what it takes to straighten you out. I know there's some people who might be looking at me right now, and there's some people who might say, I can't come close to Jesus because I can't identify with Jesus. Some young person might be saying, you know, I've dealt drugs before, and I'm out there slinging drugs, and I can't straighten myself out. I want to be straight, but I can't. I got into the game to put a little money in my pocket and food on my table because it was my best option, so I thought at that time. And when I got into it, I was only going to do it for a little while, but now I'm in it. I can't get out of it. I'm stuck. There might be somebody who said, I might be stuck on uh, pornography. I got into it and now I can't break away from it. I can't straighten myself up. I can't fix myself. I'm stuck on it. There might be some who are here who are saying that I'm a thief and I can't help it. I started stealing and now I'm a kleptomaniac. And no matter what I do and no matter how I try to control it, I can't control it. I'm twisted. I'm bent over. I can't straighten myself myself out. I'm stuck. There is nothing I can do about it. I'm broken and I cannot fix myself. I have all of these issues going on underneath my skin and I want to fix myself and I can't, but I've come to church and when you come to church, Jesus points you out because he recognizes you and he tells you to come close, but you say, no, I can't come close because you can't identify with what I'm going through. You don't know me, Lord. You don't know what I've been. You don't know where I have gone. And some young person who is out there in the streets slanging drugs and dealing with gang banging, you will say, Jesus is too soft for me. He can't identify with who I am because I'm a ride or die brother. And that's not the kind of Jesus that I recognize in the word of God where you've been looking at the word wrong because if you can't see Jesus as the original ride or die brother. You don't know who Jesus is. All you've got to do is follow the man through his ministry. He had a disciple to turn against him and to betray him. He had another one that sold him out and denied him. And yet when they arrested Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane and took him to jail, he didn't tell on any of them. He didn't say, well, you know, I can turn state's evidence. There are 12 others of them out there, and I can turn all of them over unto you. If you give me a reduced sentence, I can turn them all in. I can give you 12 for my one. No, Jesus did not open his mouth because Jesus is not going to rat you out. Jesus is not going to tell on you. Whatever you tell to Jesus, Jesus takes it in confidence and he takes it to the Father and whispers in the Father's ear, what's going on? No, Jesus ain't going to turn against you. 
No, Jesus ain't no snitch. He's the original ride and die, brother. Don't you see him down at the jail preaching as they strip him and they beat him with their whip, their cat and nine tails, and then they take the crown of thorns and put it on his head. They take the cross, put it on his shoulder, and he marched that cross up the Calvary, and there they crucify him, and he dies for all of us. Y'all, you talking about ride or die? I don't know if anybody who will lay down his life for me, he's riding out. You don't know him. He said, no, you don't know me, Jesus. I've been heartbroken. I've been put down. I've been disappointed by so many people. You can't identify with my pain. Jesus says, oh, yes, I can identify with your pain. My best friend said that he never knew me. My close confidant turned me out for 30 pieces of silver. I had 12 disciples, and all of them ran and left me by myself. How do you think that makes me feel? I had a family that didn't didn't understand me that said that I was crazy and I lost my mind. How do you think that makes me feel? Yes, I was heartbroken. So bring your broken heart. Bring your broken dreams. Bring your shattered hope. Bring your disappointment. Bring them to Jesus because Jesus knows how to handle it. He told the woman, you come here. The broken one Come, come here, the twisted one. Come here, the one that can't straighten herself out. He told her, you in church, that's good, but come a little closer because I got something for you. And then we see Jesus, watch it, heals her through protests. I think I just said something. He heals her through protests. Because when he brings her to him, and he said, woman, thou art loose your, of your infirmities, and he touches her and straightens her up, the Bible said that the leader of the synagogue, the pastor of the church, got mad. And he got mad at Jesus for healing her on the Sabbath. He said, you got six days to do this. Let them heal on the other six days. Why do you come and heal on the Sabbath? <laughs> you know why? Because Jesus tells us, this is in the verse, he calls them hypocrites. And here lie, herein lies their hypocrisy. Because they are hypocrites. <sighs> Because of how they understood the Sabbath commandment. In the Bible, God says in the Ten Commandments, all the Lord says is, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. All of that other stuff is nothing but their interpretation of what God said in his word. And so now they got, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That's all God said. And so man took it and says, here is what God meant when he said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. It means you can't do this on the Sabbath. It means you can only take 11 steps on the Sabbath. It means if you take a 12th step, you are in violation of the Sabbath. It means you can't carry much stuff on the Sabbath. You can only carry seven pounds. If you carry eight pounds, you are in violation of the Sabbath. You cannot work on the Sabbath. You cannot do this on the Sabbath. If somebody is sick on the Sabbath and that person is sick unto death, you can only keep them alive on the Sabbath, but you can't heal them until the Sabbath day is over. That's your interpretation of Sabbath. That's not necessarily what God meant when God said Sabbath. And so Jesus is not in violation of God's word when he heals this person on the Sabbath, but he's in violation of their interpretation of God's word. And be careful about people who think their interpretation it's the only interpretation. And so Jesus is saying, I am protesting how you interpret the word of God. I am protesting. 
the hypocrisy of the religious establishment because we recognize that the religious establishment, the scribe, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the others, the priesthood, we understand that y'all are working in cahoots with the Roman Empire, our colonialists, that you are working in cahoots with them to keep the rest of us in oppression. And so Jesus is saying, if your religion is putting people in bondage rather than setting people free. He said, I'm not going to walk away from the religion of my father, but I'm going to stand here in protest. And so healing this woman on the Sabbath was an act of protest. And that's interesting to me because he protested by healing her. He could have healed her yesterday or he could have healed her tomorrow, but he waited until the Sabbath as an act of protest. And while he is protesting, the person, the ruler of the synagogue, those that are in cahoots with the ruling class said that you don't need to be healing on the Sabbath. Isn't it interesting how the oppressor always wants to tell the oppressed how and when to protest? Y'all didn't catch that? Here is the oppressor. The ruler of the synagogue, he's in cahoots with the religious establishment of Israel. And here he is, Jesus is in protest. And while Jesus is protesting, he wants to tell Jesus when and how to protest. You are the oppressor. You can't tell me when and how to protest. That's what a protest is. It's protesting your oppression of me. I protest. You can't dog me out and then tell me how to protest. You can't treat me wrong and then tell me how to respond. You can't deny me of dignity and humanity and then tell me how to protest. It's interesting. That's how the oppressor does that's why it was interesting to me when, 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 when police officers were killing and shooting unarmed folk and it's out of hand and it's still out of hand and every time you turn on social media or turn on your television and look at traditional media, you see people being shot and killed and harassed by a police officer and then Colin Kaepernick protested by kneeling and people went crazy trying to tell this man how to protest. Didn't say anything about what caused the protest, but dogging this man out for protesting. You can't dog me and treat me any kind of way and then tell me how to protest. You know, Jesus is a protester, y'all. I said the man is a protester. When we see him marching into Jerusalem, riding that donkey on that, uh, on that, uh, good, on that Palm Sunday, th that's not a nice little sweet pageantry. Go back and read the text. That's a protest. That's a march on Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the capital of the religious power, the capital of political power, and the capital of economic power. And here Jesus is coming in on Jerusalem, y'all. That was a march on Jerusalem. That was a form of protest. Here's how I know. Because those who are the power brokers that be, when Jesus was marching in and the folk were shouting Hosanna, they told Jesus, Jesus to tell them to be quiet because the oppressor is always trying to tell the oppressed how to protest, when to protest, where to protest, what to say at your protest. Well, if you can control my protest, it's not a protest. Jesus said to this woman, right on the Sabbath, woman, you are free from your infirmity, an act of protest. Check it out. And the woman straighten up because protest, inherent in protest, is power. There, there, there is therapeutic value in protest. There is cathartic value in protest. When I, to, to protest means that I'm standing up against my bully 
And there is something cathartic about that. There is something empowering about that. Standing up to your bully. And I know somebody, some of y'all can identify with it because there, there have been those of you who have gone to work and you have a bully for a boss. And that bully treats you inhumanely. That b- bully treats you with indignity, talks to you any kind of way. And you don't want to talk back. You want to say something, but you dare not because you are afraid you might lose your job or you might afraid that you might get fired. And, but that bully boss has been dogging you out every day for several years. And then you have told Yahweh God, you know what? If she said one more thing to me today, I'm going to stand up to this bully and I'm going to look this bully eye to eye and the confrontation showed up and you said God I don't know what's going to happen after this but I cannot stand to be a a dehum uh, I cannot stand to be uh, humiliated anymore I cannot stand this inhumanity and this indignity and this disrespect anymore and so you stand up and look your bully eye to eye and you tell that bully what you've been wanting to tell that bully for the last five years you don't know what happens afterwards but didn't it feel good to be able to get that bully up off you because that bully has been dogging you out and you stood up in protest and looked them eye to eye and told them what you thought and told them how you felt and told them to back up off me and if you fire me that's okay the same God that opened this door will open another door for that because whatever else happened God does not want me humiliated God does not want you stripping my humanity away from me. So I'm going to stand up to you. And it feels good on the inside of y'all. It is so empowering when you stand up. Y'all saw the color purple? Because Mr. was beating on Seely the whole time. Humiliating her. Dehumanizing her. Stripping her of her dignity. Treating her like dirt, like she was a nobody. Going upside her head anytime he felt like it. But she started hanging out with the right people, Seeley did. And she started looking at herself with respect and with honor and started looking at herself with dignity and with grace. And she finally understood that I don't have to live in this humiliating situation. I don't have to be dehumanized any longer. And so Mr. got in one of his moves and he walked over to Seeley and raised his hand to hit her. And Miss Seeley did. I don't know what that means, but she did this. And Master obviously, Mr. obviously knew what it meant because he put that hand down and wouldn't set his black behind down somewhere. And he never touched her again because Miss Seeley stood up and stared her bully eye to eye and said, it stopped here. And then there was a glow that came over her. There was something that came over her that looked like pride, that looked like empowerment. My brothers and my sisters, Healing protest is a form of healing. There is therapeutic value. There is medicinal value. It is cathartic to be able to stand up to your bully in the form of a protest. That's why Jesus told the woman, come here. This is an act of protest. And he spoke to her. He said, woman, thou art healed. Put his hands on her. Listen, if you're going to get straight, if you're going to straighten it out, coming to church is not enough. You got to get close to Jesus. And that ain't even enough. Jesus spoke to her. You've got to be open and receptive to his word. Oh, I like that. He spoke to her. Spoke to her crookedness. Spoke to her infirmity. See, too many people want God to speak but doesn't want to speak to our infirmity. Many of us want a word to justify our infirmities, to make us comfortable in our twistedness, to make us feel at home in our brokenness and our bitterness, to make us feel like your twistedness is normalized. But when you are open to the word of God, God speaks speaks to your crookedness. God speaks to your twistedness. God speaks 
to the bent areas of your life and you know you have accepted and received God's word because you begin to act on God's word. The woman was bent. Jesus told her, you come here. She cobbled over to Jesus and when she got to Jesus, Jesus said, woman, your infirmities are healed and laid his hands on her. And the Bible said she straightened up because she believed what Jesus had said. See, there's one thing to believe what the man says. It's another thing to walk in what he said, to respond to what he said, to step out on what he said, because it took some effort on her part. Jesus spoke. She could have kept standing there. Jesus spoke to her. And she says, in essence, I believe what the man says. So I'm going to give it one good push based upon the word that Jesus just spoke to me. I'm going to give it a push. Woman, your infirmity is healed. Put his hands on her. Woman, thou art loose. And she began to. Uh, finally, I'm upright. Finally, I'm walking straight. Finally, that within me that was twisted has been straightened out. Finally, that which has been bent in me for 18 years has been straightened out. And you know what she did after that? The Bible says she began to give him praise. Oh, my brothers and sisters, that's how I know that Jesus has been working on your brokenness, that Jesus has been working on your twistedness because you're not afraid to give the man praise. You're not afraid to give him some glory. You're not afraid to give the man some honor because the Lord has been working on your twistedness. If the Lord has straightened you out, you ought to give him praise. If the Lord has turned you around, you ought to give him praise. If the Lord Lord has made a way out of nowhere. You ought to give him praise. If the Lord turned your life around and straightened you out or in the midst of straightening you out, you ought to give the Lord praise. Oh, let's, let's, let's straighten it out. Hallelujah for the Lamb of God. The door of God's church is open. If there's one today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. You have an opportunity right now to receive Christ and be saved. You've never said yes. Jesus is not a part of your life. Here is your chance, your privilege, your opportunity to receive Christ and be, straight and be saved. Whatever it is that's twisted in whatever area of life, the power of Christ can straighten it out. May not happen overnight. May not happen over weeks. May not happen over months or over years. But if you keep walking with Jesus, the more straight that twisted area in your life becomes. The more straight the bent areas in your life become. The more straight the, 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 the contorted areas in your life become, but you have to keep walking with the man. Stay close to Jesus. Right where you are, here is your chance. If you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and your Savior, whether you're streaming with me or in person, the Apostle Paul makes it clear that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the promise is thou shalt be saved, Romans 10, 9. You've never done that and you want to be saved. Pray this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. I believe you died on Calvary for my sins. I believe that God raised you from the dead. I believe that in my heart, with all my heart. I accept you now as Lord. Come into my life for the forgiveness of my sin. If you prayed that prayer, beloved, you are saved. And welcome to the family of Christ. Now you're going to need a church home. And I like to recommend Mount Carmel Church. 
We're all trying to grow. We're all trying to straighten up because all of us got some crookedness in us that Christ is straightening out. All of us got some bent in us that Christ is trying to straighten out. So we can do that. We can join that. We can do that together. We can be in it together. So don't think that everybody in the church is straight, no twisted areas, no contortions, no bent areas. We all have them, and we're all working to get better, to get even more straight. So why don't you join us? Why don't you join us? If you're streaming with us, you don't have to wait until you come into the building. You can go to our website, mountcarmelindy.org. And you can send us an email indicating your intention of connecting with the Mount Carmel Church. And our team will reach out to you to walk you through the onboarding process. If that's you, if you're here, God bless your heart. Come on, put those hands together. Let's bless God. Amen. Let's prepare now to worship our God through giving. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> our God is awesome, worthy to be praised. We recognize uh, the task that's before us here in the Far East Side community and the things that we're working toward, the things that we're trying to bring to pass, trying to bring to fulfillment. And uh, it's going to take all of us, it's going to take all of our help, all of our resources. So we do appreciate those who have been consistent in your giving, those who have been consistent in your support, we thank and praise God for you. Amen. And we do encourage you to continue. And those who have not yet joined us in this wonderful adventure of supporting ministry and supporting church and being obedient to God's word, we ask you uh, to join us. Uh, there are a number of ways that you can give. You can give through our Secure Give app. You can give uh, at our website, mountcarmelindy.org. You, uh, you can give uh, through texting. That number should be on the screen. You can text the amount that you want to give and then text give and we'll get it and use it to the glory of God. Or you can mail it to us. You can mail it to us at Mount Carmel Church, 9610 East 42nd Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46235. Or those of you who are in person, you have two other options. You can give through the kiosk or you can give via the envelope system. However you give, uh, it will be appreciated and it will go toward the work of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you've given unto us. Lord, we thank you so much because you are so awesome and so good to us. God, we thank you for providing revenue streams and jobs and opportunities to make a living for ourselves and for our families. We come now, God, to give back to you a portion of what you've given unto us. We thank you in advance how you're going to bless us. In Jesus' name, we pray and God's people said, amen. Let us stand to, uh, to receive the benediction. Always remember Jesus.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Ghost and the love of God, rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us. Henceforth now and forever, let's put those hands together and bless God.